Hello, hello, art friends. My name is Tara Lynn. I am the artist behind Paint, Rinse, Repeat. And uh, I just wanted to give you a quick hello before we get started. Um, the reason why I wanted to make sure uh, to schedule this event and to schedule events like this every so often um, is because the reason that I or the reason behind uh, paint, rinse, repeat really is that um, we, we each have the ability to take time and make time for ourselves and our creativity and our art. And it doesn't have to be, um, you know, a crazy long process. It doesn't have to be complicated. You don't have to invest a ton of money or a ton of time. Hi, Jerry. Nice to see you. Glad you're here. Um, and so I just wanted to show you this fun pumpkin. My microphone keeps falling. Let me pin it on my shirt here. There we go. Um, and so I was saying, I, was, I wanted to show you this uh, fun pumpkin lesson, um, which can be changed up in so many different ways. It's super fun. Uh, um, and uh, we can do it in 45 minutes or less with just a few really simple supplies. So. I'm excited to share this with you and um, I hope you enjoy it. I can't wait to see your samples and I will walk you through step by step. Um, hi, Carol. Oh, I see everybody's hopping on. This is fantastic. Um, and this is one that a variety of artists um, have been sharing um, a lesson of this type. And I thought, you know, this just really kind of symbolizes what I love about art. Um, what I love about having an art business and it kind of fits my mission. I really just want to encourage people to make time for themselves, to make time for their creativity and to enjoy the process. So let's get started. I'm going to take my goofy face off the camera here and I will make this a little bit bigger. So um, if and when you signed up for this event, you should have gotten a few files. Um, if you've made it here to the live, I assume you have figured that out. Um, the link to the video is on the supply list. That's how all my classes work. Um, you also got a tracer. Um, and so I'm going to walk you through how to transfer a tracer. So um, I'm working on 11 by 14 today. So it comes in two pieces and the easiest way to transfer is to have a piece of carbon paper. And when you're doing a transfer, you put the shiny side down of the carbon paper. Now, if you don't have carbon paper, another really easy way to get an image transferred is to grab a pencil. And if you take the pencil, and I call it carbon paper, it's actually graphite paper, it's not carbon anymore. That was what we use for typewriters back in the day. But you can just scribble on the back of this tracer. And this works the same way as having a piece of that transfer paper. And then when you go to draw your lines, it will transfer over. Um, so you can either use the pencil, just flip it over. And then when you trace, your design will transfer. Or you can put your carbon paper in between, uh, shiny side down and then go over your transfer. And this is not something I demonstrate every class, but I do like to show it once in a while because I know not everybody has done this before. And if you don't like using a pencil for your transfer, you can also get colored chalk and scribble on the back, way, on the back in uh, much the same way. So that's what happens when you do that. You end up with this transfer on your canvas here. And I'm just going to make sure that this horizon line is nice and clear. Um, so in my sample, I used the colors purple um, and orange for my pumpkin. And I used purple and blue 
for my background. So I'm going to shake it up today because you have the visual of the purple and blue. You have that as a sample. We've got it up on the screen. Um, so I'm going to go um, a little different and I'm going to use for my background, I'm going to use shades of pink. So I'm going to get a nice light pink and white. Um, and you can use any colors you want. If you want to go traditional uh, fall colors, you could use yellow and orange. If you like the sample, you can use purple and blue. Um, when I sent an email out for this event today, there were some really cute ideas that you could pull from. Um, so don't feel like you have to do things exactly how I do them. That's the fun of art. Feel free to make it your own. Um, so I've got this uh, like light candy pink and some white. And so I'm gonna put both colors on my palette here. All right, and so we are just gonna fill in the background. I'm gonna use a nice big brush. Um, and we're gonna fill in the background. And one of the other things that I have recommended was a big scratchy brush. Hi, Jennifer, glad you're here. Um, so I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Give me just a second. Sorry about that. I had it on my table, but it was on the other side of the table. I couldn't reach it. <laughs> um, so um, you can get a, like a big scratchy brush if you've got one of these um, chip brushes. Um, you can use that. Or if you have an old paintbrush that's just kind of old used and scratchy and kind of in bad condition, you can use that too. Um, but anyway, the first thing we're going to start doing is just getting some color on this canvas. So you can use any colors you want. Like I said, I'm going to start with pink and white. And I'm just going to start alternating pink and white on my brush and filling this in. I don't care what these brush strokes look like. Just go fast and fun. Have a good time with this, okay? And what I like to do is when I'm doing my background, I like to do my edges as well because that way I know the color is going to match. I don't have to worry about matching that color later. So I'm going to do very quickly the front of my canvas here. Don't take too long. The faster you go, the easier this process is. We're just kind of making a smudgy, brushy mess. And then I'm going to come through and paint my edges. I can tell you that my decision here to paint with pink at the very last minute um, happened like right as I started. Um, oh, Kathy's here. She's excited to paint tonight. I am too, Kathy. I have been thinking about this all day. I've had a crazy week and so this is kind of my piece. Um, so I decided right when we started that I was going to change this up because I had the entire time I was thinking I was just going to redo that sample. But I really wanted to show you guys that you can just kind of wing it. That creativity does not have to be this long planned out confusing process sometimes. I've been really inspired too. Um, this year, uh, Michaels has got some fun Halloween themes. So they have like a neon Halloween, which I am loving, um, which kind of, um, I haven't bought anything yet, but I really like it. They've got like really fun neon colors. And then they have pastel Halloween, um, which I normally would not go for, but it's really cute, the stuff they have. They have like lavender colors and light pinks and yellows, and it's really kind of cool. All right, so I have my canvas colored. 
I've got my edges. I'm gonna wipe off this brush. And if you're painting along with me tonight, let me know what color you decided to do for the background. I wanna know what everybody's up to. I know it's hard to type and paint all at the same time. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the next step is I'm gonna take my scratchy brush or an old brush. Um, I'm gonna dip it in some white paint. And I don't want a whole lot on there, you'll see. Um, I don't have a lot on the brush. It's really just kind of barely wetting the end of the bristles. And I'm just going to kind of scratch some of this in there in random areas. But just kind of quick, fast little holds the brush. So even if you're using, you know, an old paintbrush like this and it's kind of scratchy, we're just getting some lines in there. And this might be hard to see on camera a little bit, so I am gonna lift it up to show you what I mean. So by pulling that, um, it just kind of creates these quick little lines. And if yours are different from mine, that's okay, because this is all about texture and pattern and play. Great, so if you're following along, step one was just filling the background with white and another color. Uh, step two was getting a scratchy brush and just scratching in some brush lines there with a little bit of white paint. It may feel like I'm going kind of fast. I am moving quickly, but I don't want you to overthink this. I just want you to play. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a color um, that works well with my background color that's kind of close. So um, I'm gonna grab another pink here, a darker pink. This one's not open. So if you're using blue, find a darker blue. If you're using purple, find a darker purple. Or you can add um, just a different tone to it, right? So if you're using green, you can add a little bit of a darker green or you can add a different green. You can add a pinch of black. Um, we're just creating a variation of the color. I want some black on this paintbrush from something else, I guess I didn't mush out. All right, so I'm just gonna mix a little darker pink in with my pink. I just wanna change the color up a little bit. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna emphasize uh, the horizon line or the uh, where the pumpkin is sitting. So I'm just gonna use the side of my brush and I'm kinda just scribbling that in there. Some of my lighter pink is still wet and that's fine. But that way it just kinda gives the pumpkin somewhere to sit, okay? Don't overthink, we haven't painted the pumpkin. Um, so I just went right across, not a big deal. This is a very abstract and loose kind of thing that we're doing. So just be quick and messy with it. All right, so if you're just joining, we did the background. Um, that was white with whatever color you chose for your background and we just kind of switched it around. Then we took a scratchy brush and we added in just a little bit of texture, a little bit of lines with that scratchy brush. So you can really see them right here. This is what I'm talking about. And then the third step is we just took a color similar to our background color. Um, I darkened mine a little bit. So I used pink and I made my pink a little darker and I just kind of created that horizon line, just a little bit of shadow down there. And I did it quick and loose, um, 
don't overthink it, right? We're just working on our background right now. All right, I'm gonna switch to the pumpkin. And uh, for the pumpkin, I am gonna use, let's see, I want kind of a nice, bright, turquoise like blue, let's see, Laguna. Um, so Apple, Apple Barrel makes this really pretty color called Laguna. I like it, it's kind of a teal. I think that will play well with the pink that I have used. So I am gonna get some teal on my palette. Again, you can use whatever color you want in my sample. Um, I used purple and orange for my pumpkin. So today I'm gonna use, I think, teal and orange and probably some pink in there as well. I'm gonna clean off these brushes before I move on just because I'm really bad about that. Anybody else bad about cleaning their brushes? I'm trying to get better. I ruined a lot of brushes because I am a slacker. All right. So for this, I'm going to get a round brush, um, kind of like a medium-ish size round brush. This one's a medium six. Um, sizing is not consistent between brands. so. Um, just something that I'm going to start by making um, the outline of the pumpkin. So this is going to be my complement color. So I know I'm going to use some orange in there. Um, so I'm just going to go right over those outlines that I traced on there. Kind of get this showing up real good. Um, and again, I'm going kind of fast. Don't worry too much about being perfect because this painting is not super realistic. It doesn't have to follow the outline exactly. Pumpkins aren't perfect in nature. They're bumpy and wobbly and misshapen and fun. All right, once you get the outline, I'm gonna start filling in this pumpkin, but only um, about a quarter of the way. I don't wanna fill it all in. I wanna leave room for other colors. So I'm gonna randomly just thicken those lines in certain areas. And again, I'm kind of moving quickly, just adding in patches of color and I'm doing it close to those outlines. mention too, um, if you're creating with me, whether you're live or on the replay here, um, I do broadcast on YouTube um, because YouTube lets you pause um, and rewind. So if there's any part you feel like I'm just going too fast for you, you can pause and you can work at your own pace. All right, now while I've got this working, I'm gonna go back to my background color. And I'm gonna use both my background color and some of this color I put down on the bottom. Um, one of the uh, things you learn in, in art is that uh, having some consistency or um, unity in the painting, whether it's with colors or design, uh, kind of brings things together. So I'm gonna just add in little bits of this color in the white areas. And I don't need to blend these two colors. I'm just getting some in there. It's 
So I used pink in other parts of my painting, so I'm gonna add some of this in here. I don't really want it to mix. I'm just getting some of that in the design. So do this for whatever your background colors are. Now I still have a lot of white in there. We're gonna let this dry and that white is going to be um, where we put our orange, okay? All right, we're gonna play with our background just a little bit. So while we were working on our pumpkin, that allowed us to have a little bit of time for some of this background to dry. Um, and what I wanted to do, what I had in mind for the background was um, a little bit of play time with some stencils and a stamp. So just to show you that you don't have to have to spend a lot of money on supplies, I'm using this little leftover, this is a condiment cup like you would put ketchup in. Um, I'm going to use that as my stamp. Um, you can use any shape, you know, if you have uh, rubber stamps, you can absolutely use those. Um, you could use the ring of a cup. You could use uh, the ring of your paint bottle, um, anything that has shape to it, you can kind of use as a stamp. Um, I've got a stencil here. Um, I like this one because it's just polka dots, but any stencil would look cool. You could use, um, you know, one with a pattern or um, any kind of design. Um, bubble wrap also makes a really fun stamp. So uh, you can use found objects. You don't have to be, um, you know, out at the craft store every time you want to create. Another fun thing um, that adds some interest to the background is you can put string in paint and then just kind of lay that down and curl it around. And I can show you that as well. So um, what I'm going to encourage you to do now is if you don't have anything to stamp with or mark make with, uh, look around your room and find uh, something that may otherwise be garbage, and let's play with that. So I'm going to grab my string, and we'll get started. Another kind of fun um, thing you can do is uh, find something with a straight edge, and I'll show you that as well. You don't have to do all of these things you can you know kind of pick and choose what you want to play with um, so um, what we're going to do is just kind of grunge up this background a bit so the first thing I mentioned is that you can use string um, so what I'm going to do is get some white paint out I'm going to use white my string here. I'm just going to kind of dip this in, pull it down. This is messy, it's kind of fun, but that's why this is called pumpkin play, y'all. Fun to play. All right, so I get my string nice and covered in paint there, and this is actually twine, so it's kind of weird, but you can just kind of like bend that around. And then I just kind of stamp it on there, and it's not gonna be, you know, a perfect line. Um, the more saturated you get, the more perfect the line might be. Let me do it one more time, and then I'll lift it up and show you on the camera what that looks like. The fun thing about string is you can kind of shape it. So if you wanted it to be, you know, um, like curly, you could do that. All right, 
So I'm gonna wipe off my fingers and then I'm gonna lift this up. And I'm gonna do a few different techniques just to show you some different fun ways you can make marks um, in your painting. But you, like I said, you certainly do not need to feel like you're supposed to do all these. All right, so this is probably fairest to see on this side. So you can see a little bit of that mark from my string. It kind of made a little loop-de-loop -loop there. Um, but it's just adding in a little bit of texture, okay? So that was the first thing I showed. All right, the next thing I'm going to do, so I've got this straight edge here using a ruler. Um, you could use the end of an old credit card or store gift card or something like that. Um, I'm going to dip right into my paint and add in some lines. Let's see, I might even get in a darker paint here. That will be easier to see on camera. All right, so I just tabbed those straight lines in there just using the edge of a ruler. They can go anywhere. We're just kind of making some fun stuff go on here on this background, so don't overthink it. Um, all right, again, I pulled out this little condiment cup as a stamper. It's just a little round cup. Um, And I'm mainly using the colors that I had in the background, so white and pink and a darker pink. So I've got some of those colors on here. And I can add in some circles. And there's no right or wrong. Um, if you want to go up next to your pumpkin, you can wipe half of that off and just kind of put it up next to there. But by using the colors that we had originally um, put in our background, it's kind of just accenting it, which is really fun. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna show you is a stencil. Um, now some of this is still wet, so it might be a little messy. So be careful if you're using a stencil. Um, but I'm going to just put my stencil on here and then you can go right into your paint colors. You can use the same colors, you can use, you know, different colors and just paint that um, stencil design on there and let it break. Don't be perfect with it. You can cover up some of the previous design that you added on there. Whatever you want to do. There's no right or wrong. We're just grunging up and layering this background. And when you layer like this, it can be really um, kind of fun and freeing because um, you can leave the, the aspects of your design that you really like and you can hide things that you don't. So if you went crazy with something and you're like, oh, I'm not crazy about that, just add a layer of something else to tone it down or change it. There's no commitment when you're layering because you can always just add another layer on top. It's kind of the fun of some of this. Make sure some of your pattern or some of the designs that you choose to layer on here go over the edge. So there's my stencil design. I'm 
I like to make sure I clean off my stencils because I'm really bad about that as well. All right, so I lift this up so you can see. So um, where my background color was similar, it kind of fades in. Some is more clear. So have some fun playing with those stencils and some stamps. All right, the next thing I'm gonna show you is some splatter. Um, splatter can be kind of messy, so if you're not set up for it, be a little cautious. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get, um, there are a few different ways you can do it. Um, you can use a toothbrush and you can rub across the bristles and that'll create some splatter. I don't have a toothbrush here um, to show you, to demonstrate with. So I'm just gonna create some splatter um, with a paintbrush and some white paint. So I'm gonna thin down some white paint. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with these bristles and kind of flick some of this on there. And this is a subtle way to get some splatter. So this is not real crazy. Um, if you want to get a little crazier with it, you can saturate your paintbrush and then you can kind of tap it and that'll make some larger splatter for you. You can see, so there's smaller splatter and larger splatter using that white um, again, it's one of my background colors, so it kind of coordinates in there. Um, so totally up to you what colors you use. But splatter is another fun way to add to your background. Um, another thing that you can do is create drips. And this is one of my favorite parts um, of my sample that I made for you guys um, is the drips. And so um, again, I'm going to use white for this. I think I'm going to use white for this. I almost went pink for a minute, but I'm going to use the white. Um, again, water it down, whatever color you choose. And then the way that I like to do it um, is I'm going to do it right across the top. So I've got some nice watery paint. And I'm going to come up here. Um, and just let it drip down. So you put that watery paint right at the top. And if it's not dripping for you, just add more and you can kind of encourage it down to a little drop there. And if you want it to run lower, you just add more paint at the top and it will flow into those drippy drips. So I'm going to do some on this side and some over here on this side. Because I started them at two different times, one that I started first is going to drip down farther. You want that drip to stop at any point you just lay it down flat and it'll pretty much stay put i need to add more water i did not have enough over here on my left side all right let's try that again there we go
in my head. I didn't really want that drip to go in front of the pumpkin. Um, but it decided to do that. Sometimes you just have to let your supplies decide what they're going to do. I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to go into the center of my pumpkin. I'm going to add in some orange and we'll use white as well. Um, I like to have orange. I, I feel like it makes us uh, think pumpkin, but you don't even have to use orange in your pumpkin if you don't want to. And so what I'm going to do is come in and I'm going to start filling in the white space of my pumpkin with my orange. And it can be hard to kind of paint in this abstract style, but try to be free with it. It's harder, I think, sometimes to be abstract than to try to go realistic. So put your brain, your analytical brain aside and just kind of fill in some of these spaces. Now, orange may not blend well with whatever color um, that you're using, so make sure this is dry or somewhat dry before you do this step. I picked up a little of that turquoise there. Just had to wipe it off my brush. So filling in some of the rest of that pumpkin with orange. And then once I get some of that filled, I am just gonna add some white um, in some areas just to lighten that orange, maybe give it a little highlight in some sections. So I don't even need to clean my brush, just kind of dipping in the white paint while this orange is wet and adding that. That just gives that orange a little variation, a little highlight. And I keep the highlights pretty close to the top of the pumpkin. All right, we need to paint the stem. Um, for my sample, I used black and gray. Um, so you can certainly use pre-mixed black and gray if you have it, um, or you can just use black and add white, whatever you want to do. So I'm gonna get some black on my palette here. I'm gonna start with the black um, and the white and mix that up into a lighter color. Uh, and that's what I'm gonna do for my stem. So I just want kind of a medium gray for that stem and I'm just filling it in. And so I did lose some of my stem up here. If you lost some of it, just redraw a wonky pumpkin stem. It doesn't have to be perfect. For the next part, I'm going to grab a small round brush. It doesn't have to be, you know, a teeny tiny detail brush. And I'm going to go right into this black. Make sure your black is a little loose. So if you're using heavy bodied paint, definitely add some water. Um, if you're using craft paint, it's probably okay. 
um, not to add water. You just want it to be nice and thin so you can get a clean line. Um, and what I'm gonna do now is just kind of come through and accentuate the outline of the pumpkin. And you see as I do this, it's not perfect. My lines kind of break and that's okay. They don't have to be perfect pumpkin lines. While I'm working with the black, I'm gonna add just a few little black smudges or lines down here at the bottom, like shadows. This is still wet up here, but I'm gonna add a little bit of outlining to the edge of that stem, and then a few lines in the front, just to get that a little texture. And then just little bit at the top as well. Now, I don't have a lot of black on my brush, but down here under this pumpkin, I'm gonna smudge in just kind of some of this remainder of the paint down here under the pumpkin. That just kind of gives it a little shadow where it's sitting. Just kind of smudging that on there. All right, we're in the home stretch. I told you we could do this in 45 minutes or less and we are almost there. Um, so what I'm gonna do um, and totally up to you what colors you choose. Um, but I'm just gonna add some blobs of paint on here and there's no fancy way to put that. It's just blobs of paint. So um, I'm gonna dip right back into that white. Um, maybe add a few just right around the edges of the pumpkin down here at the bottom. Um, this for some people can be the hardest part is just smudging it up, going crazy, adding these little fun accents. So I added some white and add some in there. You can go over your pumpkin, you can go next to your pumpkin. So at this point, I'm not adding new colors. I'm gonna use um, and kind of keep the same palette of colors that I've got going on. That just gives it, again, some um, uniformity, some consistency. And then um, I am gonna use some orange. And um, that's because I used some of that in the pumpkin and I wanna bring some of that outside of the pumpkin. I'm just smudging this around. And then one last thing, uh, my final step, I'm gonna go back to my bristly brush. Right now mine is wet with water. I should not have put it in the water, but I wasn't really thinking, so I'm just going to dry that off first. Um, and then I'm going to use my neutral colors, which white and black or gray, um, and I'm just going to tap just a little bit of this um, in there. So I get some on my brush, I offload it by tapping a little bit. Um, And I'm just going to tap some on each side of this pumpkin. So I went with black. I could have used white. 
And that just kind of grunges it up a bit. And of course, when you get to this step, when you're at the end, you can absolutely um, look and see what else it needs. Um, does it need more splatter? Does it need more um, drips? Uh, you can play. You've chosen your color palette. Um, decide what you want to add. So I'm going to throw a little bit of turquoise drips in here on top. But that is it. I am finished. Um, so that was Pumpkin Play. And um, it was just a fun way to show you that you can create um, with random materials, uh, really without much planning, and you can just have fun with it. This is super cute. Um, you know, probably not something that's, you know, going to win an Artist of the Year award, but it's fun. It's seasonal. Um, and I took time for myself. I took time to get my stuff out and to just play. And I had a really good time with this. Um, if you're watching, uh, you can stick around just a few minutes and I'm going to show you a fun trick for the edge of the painting. Um, but before I do that, I just want to um, tell you about a few different things. Um, so if you are new to follow me, um, I would love it if you would share your work with me. And I have a group that you can join for free. Um, and you can share any creations that you make with me or um, pieces that you create on your own. And it's a Facebook group. You go to facebook.com slash groups slash paint, rinse, repeat. You can share your pumpkin play lesson in there. Um, and we will cheer you on. And anything else you create with me or originals, you can put, post in there as well. And we'll encourage you. Or you can tag me on uh, Facebook or Instagram at Paint, Rinse, Repeat or hashtag Paint, Rinse, Repeat and I will see what you've made. Um, and that's kind of a fun way to share your artwork as well. Um, I will give a shout out to my supporters. So um, part of the premise of me having um, this online business in painting is that I love to encourage other people to paint. Um, to make time for themselves, to have a good time. Um, and so if you enjoyed yourself tonight, um, I encourage you to follow my Facebook page. Um, but I also have a supporter membership that I um, just want to give a shout out to my supporters for being there and supporting me and making time for themselves. Um, but if you're interested, uh, my supporters get each and every one of my online classes for one low price. It's $9.99 a month. Um, it can be anywhere from four to six classes a month that you can pick and choose from. Um, you can participate live or you can participate on a replay. It works very similar to what we did tonight. Um, I have everything from, um, you know, really simple and fun paintings like this pumpkin play, um, all the way up to some more difficult level paintings where you're doing shading, um, and adding some of your own designs. So just wanted to throw that out there. If anybody is interested, um, it's something that I keep open all the time so you can enroll, um, whenever it's convenient for you. If you have any questions, my email is tara at paintrinserepeat.com. Um, and that's all the information I'm going to throw at you. Um, one of the things that I like to do for my edges, so I pre, you know, we painted our edge at the beginning of the lesson. Um, but I have kind of a big and ridiculous amount of washi tape. Um, and so what I like to do is after my edge of my painting has dried, I will pull out a coordinating washi tape. Um, I might use a teal tape since we did, I did teal and pink, but you could use, you know, um, anything that you've got laying around. And what I do um, is all I need for this is a little bit of white glue and some washi tape. And I'll go around my painting. I just start in one of the corners with the washi tape. And I usually like it to be just a little bit smaller. I don't want it to take up the whole width of the canvas, the whole side. Um, I want some of that background color to show. 
through. But this just gives it a nice finished look. So I go all the way around. And then what I do is I just get some glue on my finger and I seal that in there. So I just go right over the top. Um, and because washi tape is a non-permanent type of tape, um, sometimes it can lift off your canvas. So this just gives it a clear coat. Um, it dries quickly and it's going to make it adhere longer for you. So that's what I like to do is just get some of this on the edge and it's a really fun way to finish it and that way you don't have to worry about framing um, some of your seasonal pieces that you put up you can just kind of finish the edge with this fun tape which you can really get at any art supply store i know they have it at like um, staples and office supply stores as well um, so you can usually find some pretty inexpensively and you know, white glue you can find anywhere and it's easy to clean right up off your hand. So that's kind of my little finishing touch trick that I wanted to share with you. Oh, thank you ladies. I'm glad you had a good time. I can't wait to see what you guys made. There's so many different ways to do this one. I could do it. I love Halloween, I love fall. I could paint this three more times and still have fun with it, I think. And if you choose to do this, if you have some washi tape, this white would really just, I mean, it takes just a few minutes to dry and then you're good to go as far as hanging. So that's kind of what that looks like finished on the edge and there you have it my friends that is pumpkin play thank you so much for joining and i will see you next time everybody have a great night don't forget to share your art <laughs>